Hello, everyone. I am Marion, and I am the head of data science and machine learning at Light and Wonder. I'll be really happy to meet you later, but in the meantime, they say that the best way to get to know somebody is to ask what their friends say about them. So here is what my friends say about me. Well, they say that I am obsessed with weightlifting, and this is the living proof of that <laughs> on my shoulder. They also say that I like to study and learn about things before they become cool. And they also say that when I really love something, I can't stop talking about it. So what did I do? I created a YouTube channel where I talk about data science and machine learning. So I will be really happy if you subscribe to it later. Now, I recently came upon a McKinsey report that said that AI has the potential to increase corporate revenue by four and a half trillion dollars. Now, you would imagine if you read that, that every business shareholder or stakeholder would rush to adopt AI into their organization to get a share of that pie. But I also read another report, and that report said that the biggest challenge product managers and AI experts face is to convince people to adopt AI. So what's the deal? Well, throughout my career, either as a product manager or as an AI consultant, I faced the same pattern again and again. Upper management being hesitant to give, to give the green light to projects involving AI, and that is for various reasons. Uh, one reason can be financial cost, another reason can be fear of job replacement or people losing their jobs, or lack of understanding about machine learning, or even plain old resistance to change. So if you're facing a similar obstacle in your company right now, or if you're hoping to pitch for an AI solution, I hope this presentation will help you and give you the tools you need to succeed with that. At the very early stages of my career, uh, I thought that if you have a really innovative idea that involves AI and it's useful, people will just, you know, tell you, take my money and do it. Well, I quickly learned that this is not the case. People will not give you the money unless your idea has a positive return on investment. And a quick reminder of what ROI is and what the formula is, you take the money that you're uh, idea will generate, so the profit, and you divide it by the number, by the amount of money you will spend to build it. And if that number is above one, then your return on investment is positive. Now, the challenging thing with AI projects is that although it's very, very easy to calculate how much money you're going to spend to build it, it's really, really hard to estimate how much profit you're going to make out of it. And this is due to the nature of AI projects, because what they usually do is that they help companies be more, people be more productive, so they reduce costs, or they indirectly increase sales by making customers more happy. So when you have your great idea and you go to your CFO to pitch for it, if your numbers are not clear cut, then he's not going to give you the green light to go ahead with your project. So what you need to do is to, of course, estimate that number. But I just said that it's hard. Well, what you can do is that you can go online. You can search for case studies uh, of other companies who did a similar thing, like the thing you're proposing your company should do. And you will find percentages or indicative numbers where they say, like this, uh, when we implemented the solution, we had X percent of cost reduction due to productivity improvements. Or you can go within your company and you can ask the teams that will benefit from your AI solution and you can tell them how much time do you currently spend on that uh, really boring thing that my AI is going to automate for you. So once you get those numbers, you can multiply them by the number of people that will be affected, you can multiply them by the number of days within a year, and there you have an estimation, a really good estimation of how much money your idea is going to generate. So remember that when you're asking for money, money is number. When you're asking for money, number and data, numbers and data are your friends, so leverage them. Another challenge I have, and I didn't expect the first time I pitched for an AI productivity-related project, was fear of people being replaced by the AI. 
Now, imagine for a second that you're the customer director of a very big company and you have a big team of people managing tickets and they're managing more tickets than they can handle. What's the first thing you do? Well, you go to the C-level people and you ask for budget to expand your team. And now another person comes like me and he or she says that, you know what, we don't need more people. All we need to do is to build an AI solution that will be the assistant of those people so that, they can make, uh, so that it can make the current team be more productive. Your natural instinct as a customer service director will be to dismiss that idea. I've heard countless excuses uh, over the years, such as, oh, the AI is not going to be good enough, or the AI is going to take so long to be created, and we need the people right here, right now, uh, to be productive. Or, you know what? What we need to do is get other people from other teams and start training everybody so that they can become much better at ticket solving. Or we need to call uh, an external consultant to restructure our whole infrastructure and processes so that it can be more efficient. All those things are the same thing. It's inventing ways for people to do more work. So, if you're going to pitch for such a thing, you need to be prepared. You need to reassure those people that are going to be affected by it that the AI is not going to replace them in their jobs, but it's going to complement their work. You also need to remind them that this would be a great uh, idea for new roles and opportunities within the team because people are going to need to train the AI, annotate the data. They will also need to maintain and uh, enhance the model over time. Uh, you need to remember that people don't want to lose their jobs and managers do not want to see their teams becoming smaller. So you need to reassure them that the AI will help them be uh, focus on the creative part of their job and not in the mundane part of their job. And when you're pitching for that, you need to have a strategy for your company to reskill and upskill people and not to scare them off. You also need to be prepared to be challenged by the people who know the business very, very well, but do not know how machine learning works. Those people are used to do things a certain way, they are used to rely on their gut feelings to make estimations about what's going to happen, or they might have a process in place that's not, that, that, that is not actually wrong, but it's probably outdated. And then, then you come with your super fancy AI solution that's an alternative to the way they're currently working, and they get defensive and dismiss it because they don't understand it. After all, their solution is good enough. Well, the answer to this problem is not to teach those people how AI works. They won't learn, and they shouldn't learn machine learning to be your advocate. What you actually need to do is use your method, your model, and compare it against their method, their current method, versus what actually happens in reality. And I know that this means that you might have to create at least a POC or an MVP version of your project early on, and if you don't have the green light yet, that will mean that it should be a, a side project and occupy your time. But trust me, if you go to a sales director and you show him that your super uh, basic <laughs> deep learning forecasting model outperforms his current method in predicting future revenue, he's not going to just love your idea, but he's going to be your advocate to the upper management. You should do that. Now, sometimes the reason you will face resistance in AI adoption, it's just because the company that you're working at is not ready yet. And the only way to overcome this issue is to start and set the foundations of innovation within the company and cultivate it yourself. And I know this is the hardest task of all, and I know it will, it will not be an overnight thing, it will take time, but you need to do it. You need to start organizing hackathons for your software engineers so that they can start building um, interesting things using machine learning, or you can set up trainings for upper management so that they can also start to understand how AI can help the company advance. Remember, not don't teach them how AI works. 
teach them the benefits of AI. Uh, and what you can also do is to go online and search for case studies of other companies that incorporated AI or machine learning within their current process, and that took them miles ahead away from the competition. So, uh, you, have, you have to keep in mind that human brains are more open to ideas that they are exposed to often. So you need to make sure that this will happen and you need to do it. Finally, even if you do apply everything I said uh, in, in this speech, you need to keep in mind that 85% of machine learning projects fail. And I know that uh, a big part of this reason is due to lack of data, lack of infrastructure, or other external factors that you can't control. But a big uh, part of this percentage is due to the fact that machine learning involves experimentation. And when you're experimenting, the majority of your experiments will fail until the one you need will succeed. So you need to factor that in. You need to be open to your colleagues uh, when you're pitching for a new idea. You need to discuss on ways on how to mitigate those risks. And if you're building a business case and you're creating timelines, you need to factor that in into the time that you'll need for building your idea because you're going to need that time. Remember, you have to manage the expectations before they can manage you. Thank you. <laughs>